welcome to the F-Block edition of Wildcat News, our first edition for the new year. Let's get started. After 15 years of working as superintendent of De West Bridgewater Public Schools, Dr. Oakley has uh, announced her retirement. Here's Dr. Oakley on why she's decided to retire. Um, a couple reasons, but in Massachusetts, there's a formula that gives years of service and age, and when you put it together and you reach your maximum, then you can retire at, at a full rate. Mr. Bodwell has some opinions on what Dr. Oakley did best. Well, one of them is the new building. She was really spearheaded the, uh, the team to get us this new building. Uh, she worked really hard all the way through our feasibility study, all the way up to the new building, so that's a huge credit to her. Uh, she's done awesome getting our curriculum in line. Here's Mr. Collins on Dr. Oakley and what she did with technology in the school. Over the years, Dr. Oakley has brought uh, a lot of technology into the district from Spring Street School all the way up through the high school. Of course, with the new middle senior high school, uh, we were able to implement a lot of new and cutting edge technology, um, very robust wireless and projectors in all the classrooms. And at the elementary schools, it was a lot of innovative new technologies such as smart boards, uh, Mimeo interactive uh, boards, and um, just general additional technology for students to use, also iPads. Dr. Oakley has plans of what to do after she retires. My plans for after I retire, I'm still working on that, but I think um, I'll teach some college courses. Uh, right now I'm teaching a course for teachers that want to become administrators, so I'll do some of that. I'll take some time for myself and I'm still figuring it out. Miss Page agrees that Dr. Oakley made important changes for WB. Um, I think doc one of Dr. Oakley's best strengths were that she was always ahead of the curve. The million dollar question everyone wants to know is... So we don't have a hard and fast timeline yet, but hopefully we'll have someone on in the early spring so that the person can start July 1st. As you can see, Dr. Oakley really has done a lot of great things for our school. Good luck on your retirement, Dr. Oakley. Now, on to Chance with some Halloween safety tips. Every year, there are countless children that go missing every year on Halloween. We asked Officer Thanks and Riley Bain on their thoughts and ex on how to make their experience and other people's experience safer. Halloween is an important time to remember to be safe. There are a number of things to look out for when going trick-or-treating, such as adult partying and false candy. Here's Officer Thaxter with more on that. Um, Halloween over the years is becoming more and more of an, um, like an ad older adult holiday. It's not just for the kids. So as far as when you say we, uh, like parents or uh, students like you folks, I would say just you know, be aware that the kids are out at a certain time. When you go into your celebrations, these kids are young. They don't, they don't understand necessarily the rules of the road. They don't understand about driving. So be extra aware that they're going to be young kids out and about on the streets. Um, because b back in prior, that, uh, or I should say more in the future, people are making it Halloween more of an adult type party. So, and which is fine, but just understand that it's about the kids, especially early in the evening. I wouldn't say necessarily avoid, I just would be very aware of lighting, depending on what, at what time you're taking your kids out. Um, you know, if you start out and it's, it's dusk, but it gets dark, again, where we worry about kids' visibility, kids running out, getting really excited, okay? So um, I would avoid those areas if possible, nothing specific. Children are more than twice as likely to get by, hit by a car and killed on Halloween. In 2017, October ranked number two in motor vehicle deaths per month. But there are precautions you can take. More on that with 8th grader Riley Bain. Um, I do, unless there is like an older person with them to keep them safe. Um, always make sure you're with somebody older than you and have flashlights. Thank you. If somebody offers you open candy, it's not good. No. And sometimes, if it's like really late at night, people will try and like be funny and scare you, and it could be dangerous for small children. Hmm. After talking to Officer Taxter and Riley, we now know how to avoid open candy and stay with friends and be aware of people on the road. 
Thanks, Chance. Looking forward to a fun and safe Halloween. Currently, at West Bridgewater Middle Senior High School, Spanish teacher Senor Fugier has been absent this year due to a battle with breast cancer. I do have breast cancer. Um, I Back in, I want to say about five to six years ago, I found out that I was BRCA2 positive. And what that means is <clears throat> I am very high risk for breast and ovarian cancer. I had <clears throat> a routine mammogram scheduled. I had the mammogram done. They called me back. They found some suspicious activity and asked me to um, go in for a biopsy. The doctors then called Mrs. Fougere with the biopsy results and unfortunately, she tested positive for breast cancer. But everything went so well. Uh, the recovery, obviously it's still going on, but I feel great. I'm even back to, I'm back to dancing. I can't go crazy, but I can do a little bit here and there. Um, my spirits are great. Mrs. Fougere emphasizes that the love and support from others is crucial when going through a cancerous battle. I've been super positive throughout this entire experience. Even my plastic surgeon told me that it didn't even look like I went through a surgery. So I feel, I feel fantastic. The love and the support that I've gotten from, from everyone has really helped me to stay positive. I can't emphasize that enough that positivity um, and the support of others is really what helps you get through this and, and keep positive. I've missed all of you so so much um, you know letters that I've gotten from you emails that I've gotten from students it, that helps me so much I can't I can't even express to you she explains how her battle with breast cancer changed her as a person I consider myself a very empathetic person but I feel like having gone through this I've become even more empathetic, if that's even possible. Mrs. Fougere takes a moment to offer the girls and women of WB advice. Just always be aware of your, of your own body. You know your body the best, and you know when something doesn't feel right. You know what you should know when something is off. And always make sure that you go to your doctor appointments, um, go see your doctors regularly, getting checkups, um, honestly, that's what saved me. Um, it's really important to educate yourself. Um, learn about genetic testing. Learn about, you know, if, you, if you've never heard of it before, take the time to educate yourself and learn. Don't judge other people. Um, everyone is so quick to make judgments, but you, you just don't know. And I, I've always known that, but I feel like I'm even more aware of that now. Um, you just never know what someone's going through. So always always be compassionate, always be sensitive, um, you know, just things to, to, to consider, things to think of. Um, but like I said before, it's, I've had time to prepare for this. It hasn't broken my spirit. Um, it hasn't really changed me as a person because I continue to be who I was before, positive. I've smiled. I was even smiling the whole time that I was in the hospital going through recovery. It has never broken my spirit. Senor Fougere gave one last piece of advice to all females at WB to get genetic testing done to see if you carry the BRCA gene. And if so, go to your primary care doctor for more information. She misses everybody and hopes to see everyone in January. Now let's head over to Ashley to hear about the statewide vaping ban. Thanks, Ali. On September 18th, Governor Baker put a four-month vaping ban in place due to the Center of Disease Control confirming 33 deaths in the 24 states. The law enforcement medical personnel, Board of Health, in the local areas have some opinions on the new ban. Well, I think it sends a, uh, a message to the makers of these products about the Commonwealth of Massachusetts' stance on the future uh, sales of these products. The length of the ban should be long enough to satisfy the questions that we have. Stopping the sale of vaping materials makes sense from a medical perspective. I think as far as the government shutting down a whole industry, I'm not uh, in full agreement with, but I think because of the public emergency and they need to do more studying, I'm okay with it. The chief and doctor had interesting opinions on the time length of the ban. Because in four months, we're not going to understand why individuals have died. And whether four months, six months, or whatever the case may be, uh, is what's required to determine this, then I think that's what we need to devote to. Some people even talked about how they could enforce the ban in different ways. 
think it's going to be a challenge. I think it's going to be uh, impossible to stop people from traveling over state lines and purchasing the material. That most of the issues with uh, the respiratory illnesses that we're encountering are from black market products that are not regulated. By utilizing uh, the medical community, uh, by using experts in the field. Even with all these people dying, there are still so many things unknown about the future effects of this product. I think it will increase because uh, as we hear on the uh, media reports that people are dying from these vape products. It's really, it's not really much better than smoking cigarettes. What we're seeing from a medical perspective is quite alarming and I don't think we quite have all the answers yet on that. In hope that people understand the effects of this trend, people will make an effort to stop vaping. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will actually slow the pace of, you know, kids in schools, colleges, and even adults from actually even attempting to do this. As of right now, the vaping ban will end in the middle of January if it does not get shortened or extended, so stay tuned. Now with Jake with the middle school shakeup. Thank you, Ashley. This year in the middle school, instead of having the 7th grade and 8th grade teachers teaching their own grade, they have the teachers a part of either the green team or the orange team, which has a combination of 7th and 8th graders on it. We asked Mrs. Page why they made this change. So we thought for the educational side and the instruction piece, it was nice to be able to have a teacher, math teacher teach in both 7th and 8th so they, they could collaborate together. I asked a couple of the teachers what some of the benefits of the new system are. But it was the idea that I have a certain amount of kids of 7th grade and a couple kids of 8th grade and so I a class I'm used to teaching and a class I'm not used to teaching, but I'm used to the kids and that's what made it so interesting. I get to change up my schedule. I'm not teaching five classes of seventh grade, even though I love it. Um, it changes up the day a little bit. And the positives too is I get to enjoy some of the eighth graders for a second year, see their growth. The teachers and students had mixed opinions about having each other in class two years in a row. Now I know day one what their weaknesses are, what their strengths are, um, if they have a rough time doing homework, if they can keep up with class, if they need my help. I don't like having the same teachers again. They just expect more from you. Uh, it's good sometimes because like it's like more diverse, and, but it's also sometimes not good because you want like something new. So like you want new teachers but some people have to get the same thing over again. Some of the students gave feedback on the change and told us what they believe can be improved in the system. Uh, it's pretty fun because if you have any friends in eighth grade that you saw last year in the Howard School, you can uh, see them again. So I think it's already fine where it's at. I just think that um, they need to like balance it out more. So like there's more um, eighth graders on the green team and less eighth graders on the orange team. The administration has many positives about the new system. I think for the teachers, it's kind of nice to teach something different um, instead of just having the same class that you're teaching over and over. With this new system, everybody is still adjusting. The teachers are enjoying this because they can bounce ideas with their colleagues while the students are still getting used to the new ideas. From all of us at F Block Wildcat News, thank you for watching and tune in to next time. <laughs>